Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And today we're going to be doing something interesting. We're going to be doing a winners and losers um, sort of video of the rugby championship for the Springboks players, basically who uh, had a really good rugby championship and they sort of elevated their profile and become part of the setup, for example, and have really taken big strides forwards um, as sort of the winners. And then losers being sort of players who maybe, not necessarily even by their fault, you know, it wasn't a rugby championship that really elevated their Springbok career or, or really sort of um, took big steps forward. And as I mentioned, it's not necessarily out of the, um, in their control. You know, it's not to say that, you know, this is a, a, a section of players who played well versus the players who didn't. But just players, for example, in terms of their, like, for example, their World Cup aspirations, where you sit now in terms of the pecking order and, and, and sort of where Rusty Rusty was probably see these players, whether they took steps forward or took steps backwards. Uh, during the rugby championship now before we do that please do smash a like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well we're gonna start with a uh, a, a winner and uh, i think probably the biggest winner for the rugby championship from a streamer point of view uplet of Bassi. that number 15 jersey seems to be his for now David Williamson, obviously, I think will come back and probably take it off him. But I think the main thing for our player first is he's put himself into that mix and he's made a really strong can, uh, case together for a potential starting berth, if not, um, you know, at least sort of second choice. Villaru is probably coming towards the end of his career. And, uh, well, we know he is coming towards this end of career. And our player first has very much got the jump. And uh, David Williamson missed out on an opportunity to sort of uh, continue uh, that rise in the number 15 jersey. I think he's one of the best players in the world. But I think Apele Fassi has firmly put himself into that sort of Springbok mix. Similarly, on that same sort of uh, 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 chat, one of the losers, I think, from the rugby championship is probably Villaru, who didn't really get to take that many steps forward with regards to getting to those sort of 100 games for the box. Uh, partly due to... Uh, the form of Apele Fassi, and also I think just, you know, with some of the, the way the games were going. Um, I thought we would have seen him a bit more, to be honest, and I thought they would have looked to try and get in those 100 games this year. Now, for example, people are even starting to question, will he get there at all? I think he will. I think he deserves to get there. I think he's been such a good servant for, for the Springboks. I still think he's got a lot to give with regards to how he's going to nurture players like an Apele Fassi, for example. You know, a lot of work he's done with a, a Damien Villemse and the like. So I think he's still got... Lots to add, but uh, he would have liked to have played more in the rugby championship, but didn't. Um, another winner for the rugby championship is uh, Sash Bamigoma Zulu. Now, this might sound strange given the fact that he's currently in um, the, the naughty books of, uh, of Rusty Erasmus. But at the end of the day, you know, he started against the All Blacks. He started against Australia and uh, he very much sort of cements himself as a proper option in that box setup. You know, if he was fit, he'd be going on the end of your tour. And I think at the moment, you know, he's definitely sort of put himself firmly into those uh, 2027 World Cup plans, as he should be, to be honest, given how exciting he is. So despite the fact that maybe his rugby championship didn't end on the sort of the note and the way he would have liked it to have, definitely a win in the rugby championship. You know, he's raised his profile. He's put himself out there. That injury is very, very annoying, but I think it's a lesson that he'll learn. And I don't think it's really knocked him back that much. I think at the end of the day, he's still far more in the protest. I mean, the Springbok plans than he was a few months ago. And that's kind of the main thing. Um, another winner uh, is Ronald Kia, a player who wasn't even part of the Springbok sort of squad in sort of that Irish series, Portugal series, um, wasn't even really on the reserve list either, suddenly got a call up due to several injuries and ended up starting a lot during the rugby championship. And uh, I think has very much put himself ahead you know, in the race of, of trying to, who's going to replace your, your Franco Masters, your Lord Diagos. I think Ruan Okia will now become a core member of the Springbok squad. It was really good line-out work. Um, you know, even I think Rashi Rasmus sort of even sort of alluding to the fact that maybe he's not quite as physical as the other players, you know, in terms of that game line advantage, but very good line operator. And I think that he is he's going to find himself playing many, many more Springbok games. Um, in terms of a, a loser, is also a lot, because Nico Jansen van Rensburg, strange decision to bring him into the squad and then not give him any more any game time. I think he should have probably played against Argentina when he went over there. Uh, he's an interesting player. You know, for me, he could have played some of the minutes Ruin Okia got. So I don't know if that's the case of they didn't expect Ruin Okia to be as good as potentially he was or whether maybe Nico Janssen Rensburg didn't impress as much as they kind of hoped in training. But I think he was the only player, uh, him and Stephen Kitzel were the only players named in the squad during the rugby championship that got no minutes. And uh, the only reason Stephen Kitzel 
didn't get any minutes was because of uh, the injury he had. So Nico Jans van Rensburg was the only player that was available from when he was called up until when he left, not to have gotten a single minute on the field. So I, probably, you know, the biggest loser in terms of not having that opportunity. Uh, losing out as opposed to calling him the actual loser for those people who can't understand that concept. Um, another player who I think is uh, is a bit of a loser after the, the, the rugby championship is Evan Ruiz. Again, nothing to do with himself, but I feel that that injury for him came at such a, such a bad time because since then, I think Ulrich Lowe has played really, really well. And then Jasper Vies has put both hands on that, that number eight jersey and said, this is mine. And uh, Cox Smith's playing very good rugby. So... Unfortunately for Evan Lewis, I think he would have had a couple more opportunities to really sort of put his hand up in the number eight jersey. He couldn't because of the injuries uh, to him. And I think Gaspar Visa has has come in and, and played really well. And I think Ulrich Lowe, maybe more importantly, has uh, come in from the side and really put his hand up. And I think that he, once again, a bit like Ruan Nokia, has put himself firmly in the mix to be more involved in the squad moving forward. Um, and uh, then... The last uh, loser I have before we sort of wrap up is uh, Kubis Reinach. And I don't think he would necessarily play terribly throughout the rugby championship. But I do think he slipped down to about third, fourth, maybe, you know, for choice scrum off. You know, I think Fife de Klerk remains probably first choice in the World Cup final tomorrow. I think Grant Williams continues to be our best option off the bench. But I think that Jaden Hendricks has gotten himself ahead of Kubis Reinach in the mix. And if you're then looking at Jaden Hendricks as your Start if Fife's not playing, you've got Williams as your impact plan. They really do rate Mornay Fundenberg as well. I think Kubis Rana could be in a bit of a tricky situation. Age not necessarily on his side. And if he's not falling down the pecking order, he becomes very easy to leave out. A bit like a, a Cheva Nyukane, who we know is good enough to be still playing for the Proteas. But because he's down sort of third, maybe even third choice, tight head, competing with Thomas Satoy, Thomas Satoy being about five or six years younger than him, you know, he's become an easy player to leave out. And I think Kubis Reinach might fall into that uh, same bracket very, very quickly. Um, let me know, the other players, who you thought sort of were winners or losers and um, have either put themselves on the Remark radar or, or, or maybe put, put themselves out. You know, I think Salman Murat, for example, I think someone who didn't really take his opportunities could have listed him as, as a major loser, but I don't feel in the Remark setup that they view him much less than before the Rugby Championship. You know, if anything, he got more opportunities to captain. He continued getting minutes. So I don't think his... Uh, value for box has been sort of diminished by the box management themselves, at least not from what we've seen from the decisions that they have made. Um, so very, very interesting situation there. But let me know down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.